Hello, welcome to podcast four. <laughs> the reason why I'm laughing there is because somebody pointed out to me that I have been introducing the podcast the exact same way in all of them. And I go, hello. <laughs> I thought it was quite funny. I'm definitely going to need to change that now though. Anyway, podcast four. Um, epic podcast, in my opinion. Stevie's on the podcast. Stevie was my client who went through a full transformation, lost five stone, changed so many aspects of his lifestyle for the better, looks amazing, feels amazing, and is continuing on his journey with uh, with his physique and his goals. And it's just an, it's a great insight into into somebody that's went through through a, you know a, an epic change in, in lifestyle and body and the struggles that he had um the things that he things that he enjoyed through it things that weren't hard and but yeah it's just uh, it's just a great insight into so or for someone who's maybe going through something similar or thinking about doing it so as always thanks so much anyone who's been listening to the podcast give me feedback um you know it makes it makes all the time doing it recording it, editing it worthwhile, but I'm absolutely loving doing it, especially the last two where I've had Eb and Stevie on as a conversation. Um, it's been it's been it's been amazing. And uh, this week I'll be recording with a very special guest. And I'm absolutely I was gonna say stoked, but that's a very American is the word that I don't usually use, so I don't know why I was gonna say that, but yeah I'm super super excited for it. So here is my conversation with Stevie. Stevie, my man. How are you doing? Good, mate. Good. Fresh out of session. Aye, so... Um, How are you feeling? Ah, good. How's good. your legs? Aye, good. So, I always like to come in here because I always try and push myself a wee bit more uh, than I normally do. Um, what? You don't push yourself in the gym? Oh, you're no, telling? no. You're not there to tell us what it is. So <laughs> obviously, I just kind of... No, but I push myself a bit more. So, I got a personal best there, 140 squat. Uh, Epic I'm mate. Delighted with that. Proper, proper depth and everything, man. Aye, it was good. It's uh, good, mate. It was aye, good. it was good. Um, but I've been working up to that, though. You know, so I'm proud of that. But uh, obviously, then I just got a wee pump of the guns on. So um, let's have a look, mate. Uh, Straight right. into the camera. That's you there <laughs> for the listeners <laughs> or the viewers. You did ask Ella if they were getting too big. Aye. I would say no. You can never get too big. But they're pretty fucking big, mate. Aye, they're doing well. Should be proud of those well. bad boys. <laughs> aye, aye, my shirt's only proud of them now, but... Aye, I yeah. know. Dripped a shirt and work. Aye. Because your lats are too big. <laughs> aye. That's what I, I like. I bent down to pick a pen up and I just heard... <laughs> and I was like, oh... That is what I like to hear, There's mate. another shirt. We ripped a shirt in here one night, do you <laughs> remember? Know, aye. Aye. That I've done funny. that. I've done that once myself, but... I think that was just because my shirt was too small. Not that my lats aye. were too big, you know, but aye. anyway, I'll take That's it. That. So, you're on the podcast, man. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's um, quite exciting. You're the first client on the podcast. Uh, Eb was obviously the first guest outside of that. You're, you're the first. Mm -hmm. So, I hear that you've been listening to what I've done so far. I, I mean, I obviously I'm in support. Of, we've known each other for a long time, you know, right. so I'm in support. I've written that you do, and obviously... The podcast is... It's a bit early to get me greeting, mate. Come on. Ah, you know, I've got back a bit after. By the end of this, you'll be greeting. Because uh, um, you've done that plenty of times to me when training in elite, so... <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, but no, like, obviously I'm a big supporter of what you do. And uh, obviously the podcast is an extension of what you're trying to achieve. And I just, you know, I've given them a listen. And they're good and they're Thanks, inspiring and um, they're real. That's what I like about them, you know. It's not some guy trying to sell you some slimming product, you know, you, you need to subscribe to it. It's just a, a real guy that's been on a journey talking about his stories and Brilliant. obviously it was interesting, you know, because I know he'd be coming in, but it was also interesting to learn how he got into the fitness industry. So he was an insight, and, uh, man. Was a, was a good insight. And uh, how he actually just kind of self-trained up to the point, you know, it was quite interesting. Totally. So it's nice to hear people's stories. So uh, it's totally man. I liked it. And the reason that you're on you're the first client because inspiring story mate inspiring story and yeah. your uh, your transformation hit a lot of people mate um people that 
I train that are looking up to to potentially get to to that level of mm-hmm. transformation, weight loss, fat loss even, and friends that uh, don't know you, people that do know you. Obviously, um, it was it was epic, man, yeah. and this is why we're doing it to get your story out there, um, yeah. to get your struggles, what you what you struggled with, and how you fought through that. What you what you found easy, what you enjoyed, and um, just to be real, aye. real talk. Aye, it's good. What I'm saying. So where we'll start <laughs> is how we met. Aye. Uh, so do, I, do you want me to tell you how, tell them how we met? Uh, do you know, do you know the date? Uh, well, I know. Was it the twentieth of January, two thousand and ten? February. February was it? Uh, it's that's close, isn't it? February, mate. Um, that's when I. St- that's when that was my first day. In work was the twentieth of January two thousand and ten. Aye, mine was the first of February. Ah, right, okay. And then we done the course. Ah, we well, we met, <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. We both, I think, we both en- aye, we found out work. we both enjoyed a beer, and well, that's, that's how we it. came aye. came close. But because obviously we t- we'll tell them where we worked. We joined a bank, didn't we? Yes, so aye, that's how we that's how we met. We joined the uh, we joined the TSB bank at the same time I exactly see. the same time or as we just as you said a couple of weeks out but uh, the same job um same training courses uh, training course was down in england one of them i one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well will we go there first or will we go to dundee first <laughs> go to dundee first but that's the one you're talking about going to dundee and i get sent we'll go to dundee right it's basically what happened in dundee was we were doing a doing a two-day three-day course but day, yeah. there was an exam on the first day <laughs> that we were meant to have studied for before we went there. And uh, basically the rules were that if you fail the exam, you get popped, <laughs> you yeah, get popped you, you home. You actually get sent him on the train. Uh, one person on that course out of, I don't know, 20 folk failed and get popped him. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, mate, I felt so bad, man. Um, uh, but watch, listen, watching you stand there, pick up all your books. <laughs> I must have to go back to the younger suitcase. No, mate. I mean, we were all we were all at Bevy the night before. I'm sure. Uh, no, I, I was I was puking. I was puking uh, that day in the toilets. Every I was getting up every half an hour to go and be sick because I was hungover. Uh, but I, I remember I was in uh, Latvia. Remember, I was in Latvia uh-huh. on a stag do, and I literally came back and I went to Dundee, sat a test, and got sent him. It was I mean, shameful. It was shameful. <laughs> it was, I mean, the test wasn't even like it wasn't even like a computer. Mate, I or anything. passed it. Was, it. It was a bit of paper, and you had to tick these boxes. I passed it. So right, that's, one that's one and one you. equals two. Is this right? And I'm like, probably right. no. You know, and it's just brilliant. Uh, but it was murder. But listen, you came back for it, mate. You're still you there. For these things, you're still there. Totally, totally still in the bank. Yeah. We'll maybe touch on stories. that a wee bit later, mate. Right, totally. What about you talking about? I was talking about when we went into Solly Hill, oh. and obviously you... That was, that was the training course, mate, that was just the, a bevy in holiday ah, in, b- in, in Solly Hall, wasn't yeah. it? We went down there and obviously um, me and Scotty are drinking that. And liked. That, liked the drink, I, uh, I still do. Uh, but, you know, and then we got down to uh, Solly Hill and we were staying in this kind of hotel type thing. And, but all the but folk in the bank worked there, obviously. And Scott all like these... A, you know, people who are earning lo- loads of money, uh, uh, very sensible people, and then we strut in uh, Scott new suits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott thinks it's a good idea to go to for a few jars. Into the tune. I, I said I was going to my bed, f- you know, I don't know why I said that, but I but this was like the, This was the second or third night in, uh, man. So I, this was the Wednesday night, I remember, because uh, so me and Gary went to watch a football match <laughs> in, <laughs> in town uh, and get absolutely pissed. Uh, Came back. Get more pissed at the bar uh, in so there, and then be like, ah, let's go and find big Hollywood. <laughs> aye, aye, don't listen. Uh, aye, that was fine. And then all I hear is, is uh, oh, sorry, pal, sorry. Oh, and then mate. next thing, my door busts open, and in walks Scott and Gary, absolutely puggle. And they actually managed to get me out of my bed. Aye. I got my clothes on, and I went to the back to the bar, and we had a good night that night. I don't, so what happened when you were saying you heard something, was I was that pissed. I thought that your room was a certain room. I was literally bouncing off the walls in the corridor. Uh, wow, is this is this room? Bars then. There's a wee guy under a duvet watching <laughs> fucking Family Guy or something on the telly like that. Yeah, what the fuck you doing? Uh, was that? You're no Stevie. Uh, and then the next thing my door goes in and it's him. Oh mate, but, I mean, what an idiot I was, man. Uh, and um, that well, is I'm probably one. one of the only people that slept in for a training course when the training course is 
at the place that you're I, staying. I literally had to walk out your room into another room and you were at the training course. I was <laughs> like, ah, you fucked that one up, definitely. Mate, I made it. I still made it. Ah, you did make it. You done well. I failed that exam. I failed that. I failed that, um, what do you call that? Observation? Aye. Aye, no wonder. I was pissed the whole time. Aye, Every night. Reeking. Everybody was, but it wasn't just me. Like, Aye. It was that night we were all, there was a pool table or something like that, a wee bit of a pool table. And a couple of the girls that were there went out and bought bottles of body and all that, that and they were coming back and we were, Jesus man, like, what were we playing at? I have no idea, honestly. What were we actually playing at, man? Do you, well, do you know what the uh, problem Funny, was? We were young. We were young. You were just young. Well, I was, young, I was younger than you. I, know. I was 22. I I mean, well, how old am I? 34. You're thirty. You've been twenty-seven yeah. then. So I've been twenty-seven. Aye. So I was a but more I was, mature. I was, I was a bit more mature. You know, a wee bit. Actually, trying to go to my bed. <sighs> well, I don't know about that, mate. Right. But um, but yeah, but that's we 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 did we did go on well, man. Right, we, we had we such did. a laugh, man. And um, we did click. So we kept in contact because obviously we never worked together in the branches right. and stuff. But I think we were, I think we were more probably got close because on a daily basis we were phoning each other, right. greeting about how hard the job was and how right. much we couldn't do it. Totally. Um, and uh, I think we were both struggled a wee bit with the stress for, for work at that point, didn't we? Uh, I, I mean, for me, I, I for one, I was I was buying tins of almost every day because uh, I was like, I'm out my depth here, I can't do this, uh, I, need to, I, need to go, I need to get pushed. It was, <laughs> a, it was a difficult environment to work in and, uh, you know, the, what we did was we just, get, we just met up and get pushed, you know. Pretty much. Every morning, well, every other night, or any opportunity we had, you, know, you in town, I I'll meet you. No, I had, I had the flat, obviously, and uh, that's right. I remember you came up that one night with a brand, brand new phone. <laughs> <laughs> brand new phone. All right, boys, how we doing? I've got the baby phone uh, right out the horn. <laughs> on a glass table. Tanned it. First done, night. Done. Done. So, Unbelievable. I was at the night. You'd uh, it was still a good night, though. Was that another night you'd done a runner? No, can you have been because you phoned me that night? So you must have had a phone. Aye, uh, no, no, I didn't. Saying you're at the Novo Hotel. Aye, oh, that's right. And I'm like, ah, you're like, that's where I'm at. How's that? What the hell are you there for? Uh, yeah, I don't know where you ended up that night because you didn't come back to mine. Anyway. He's coming back, he's always just in Hills, in Hills Street or something like that. So, but it was good, but, but it was there good. were good times though, man, and um, obviously that's how we Mostly became drink. That's how we became good pals, meet up for a drink and um, talk to each other, try to help each other through the job, basically. Yeah, totally. Um, and uh, we took it through there. So obviously, you... You knew my dad mm-hmm. through the bank. I think he's, um, I think he's ended up working together. No, working together, but meeting each other through the bank Aye. in regards to the branch and the branch stuff like that. So when he when he died, obviously, you knew me. You're close to me, and and you knew him. So mm-hmm. you were, uh, you were, you know, you were one of the people who was obviously there for me and um, always, always willing to say you know give a phone if you're struggling that which obviously mm-hmm. i really appreciated but then that's obviously how then that's when my life turned around and then um, you were obviously at one point looking at me probably going this guy's a fucking nutcase man like um what's the, what's the matter with him and mm-hmm. then obviously then the next minute i'm i'm after drink mm-hmm. and i'm slimming down i remember <laughs> and then um, kind of leads on to the next question probably which mm-hmm. is why did you start? Why did you why did you contact me uh, to start training? Explain. I think, uh, like on reflection, I remember obviously when you d- you don't you know you don't mind me talking about this, mate, but of course. I think on reflection, I remember prior to your dad dying, you said that you were going to stop drinking. Obviously, for various reasons, it's in your other podcast if anyone wants to listen to it. But good plug. You know, I didn't actually. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't feel I had a problem with drink. I, I still don't. You know. You know. I maybe take it too far. And I, I think everybody would be kidding themselves on if they did never do that. But, <laughs> um, but what actually happened was I remember when your dad died. And then we had a conversation with you. And he said, and I, said, and I gave you advice. I said to you, oh, you, going, you, you can't go back to the drink now. You know the rest. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And you didn't. And then asking obviously. Me, and then I remember meeting you one day. We went for. I can I met you for lunch or dinner? And you were Brazil? No, no, it wasn't before that. that. It was some shitty wee Chicago town thing, and you got a burrito. Oh no, that's oh, I, I remember that. I remember that. And that, and I that think I, I, I was 
just started training a wee bit at that point. Right, aye. No, it was just before it because mine. This was like my last. This was like my last supper. Aye, aye, that's right. So I remember the last supper. Aye. Aye. I was like, I'm going to get a hot dog and chips, man. Aye. It's the last thing I can do. I remember this, and he says, because uh, I didn't actually obviously know it's got quite grown, but I met you for lunch and you took me. Right. What was that place? New York, Chicago. New York, like that. Delhi. No, New York. Brooklyn, Aye, Brooklyn, was, New York. It was, was alright. It was, it it's was still going. So, still, uh, so it must be alright. So, so for the guy, for the guys that what you're listening, it's brilliant. Ah, it's brilliant. Aye. So <laughs> no, but we went there, and I remember Scott saying just exactly what he said. You know, he goes, "I'm going to order this chili dog, this other thing, this thing," and I'm thinking, "What are you doing?" And you, but at this point, I knew you were looking better. You were, you were near. I don't know. No, we're near what your physique is at the minute, but <laughs> you were, you were on the, on the right path. Yep. And then I remember you goes like, ah, says, what are we doing now? And uh, thinking, with, like, I was going to go for a pint. I knew you wouldn't go for a pint. I think I took a pint in that wee place. I can't remember. You probably did, I. Um, but then you said, I'm going to haul the barrets. And I'm like, what are you going to haul the barrets for? You're I like, I need, this, to, I need to buy all these This vitamins. is where it is. I'd been training Weeb for a wee while. He was starting me on a, like a, pla- like a, like a real food plan where I couldn't yeah. eat any unnatural foods and that kind of thing and I had to have these certain supplements yeah. and obviously that was the day I was going to buy them all. So it's got to buy all these Holland and Barrett things. Fucking cost me loads of money buying them. I know, I am, but uh, there is alternative options out there folks if you don't want to spend a fortune on Holland and Barrett you can go into Savers and get the same thing for a pound. So, uh, <laughs> oh, don't you be dissed on the Barrett man, their protein bar selection is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> there are other major retailers out there you can use. So, no, but I remember that day quite vividly and I thought, oh, well, he's going to do what he's going to do and all the rest of it. But I remember uh, I thought to myself, you know, I didn't have the best life still prior to starting to train. I had tried in the past to go jogging or, you know, well, I'm not going to, you know, or watch what I'm eating. But watching what you're eating was like, I'm going to have half a poker chips instead of a full poker chips or have a half pizza supper instead of a full pizza supper. You know, or I'll, or I'll go to Greg's and I'll get a Greg's and I'll not get a Coke, I'll get a Diet Coke. I wasn't, I didn't even really know what I was doing, but I would attempt it. I would go out jogging, that would maybe last for a couple of weeks. A tiny wee bit of weight would come off, but I, you, I, they, I was never really inspired to um, really go for it and make a big, big lifestyle change. And I, I suppose having watched what you did, well, I thought, well, Scott can do it, I can do it, and then oh, I thought, um, obviously, you're not getting any younger, Stephen, and then I thought as well, I'm actually, in the, I've got a good job, I want to move through my company, and I thought, do you know what, I want to look better to sit in front of people in interviews, I want to look better for my girlfriend, you know, I want, I want to feel better for myself, and I thought, and then I just remembered that the amount of times me and Scott are just doing legless all the time, and he, 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 he totally looks different to what he did, you know, he did do in the past, and I thought, you know what, see if he can do it, I can do it. So that's probably what inspired me to contact you and uh, ask for your help. Totally and I think that, that was a few years ago now, what was that, three, three years ago? Three and a bit maybe, four? Aye. How long? I don't know. I've lost count. No, no, it's no four, man, about three years, aye. Boom, basically, um... I think also that you were saying there, I think that you knew yourself that the lifestyle you were living probably wasn't having you in the best frame of mind for work either. No, no, like, you know, on a Monday, totally, totally. Um, as a applying for p- better positions and all that kind yeah. of stuff. I think when you're in a, in a way of possibly drinking too much at weekends, no eating well, you just don't feel good about yourself. So that, that can have a knock-on effect with lack of confidence Aye, and totally. not just how you look, but job as well. So that leads on to the next question your lifestyle before you started training, just basically eating rubbish and drinking too much at the weekends. Mate, honestly, I was like, if anybody's, like, everybody knows and everybody's met the guy that just go to him for work, flung a pizza in the oven, because that was easy to do. Yep. Crack a couple of cans on, stick the PlayStation on, watch your telly, then go back and get <laughs> a piece later on, then have a couple of packets of crisps and go to your bed, you know. Wake up the next day, what are you eating? You're eating toast and a lot of wada margarine because it's convenient. That was me. Going to Greg's on my lunch breaks was Something about thing. the bank and Greg's, mate. Like, there's always uh, a Greg's right. beside the branch I and I lived off it for years. That's murder, it's so man. cheap. It's cheap. They do meal deals, Tesco meal deals. That was my thing. I didn't do any food shops. It was all frozen stuff, right? So they have frozen pizzas, frozen pies, frozen 
everything was frozen. When you open my fridge, the only thing that was fresh was a tin of Coors Light. You know, it's it wasn't, <laughs> you know, it wasn't. Sure, it. still one of them in the other room, And then it was like beans and toast, and it was just, that was my life. You know, right. everybody's just convenience food. You know what I mean? Or takeaway food, especially on a Sunday if you're. Uh, absolutely. So you're ta- ah, exactly your time. Probably does it sound as if it was great during the week anyway, and oh, then it's and then at weekends it was even worse with takeaways oh, sure. and drink. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. So it's no wonder that you got to the stage you were at because uh-huh. obviously it's probably the biggest reason why you decided to change because uh-huh. you just weren't happy with how you looked. Well, it, I mean, I don't think I mean I, when I what, what I seen when I looked in the mirror I wasn't happy with. No, not at all. You're absolutely right, but. Also, the some fact forties for back then, man. Aye, like, I mean, like you were saying to me, like, I look different. You look, you, you as well, mate. Like aye, you just look totally bizarre, isn't it? Mental, man. But I know it's weird. But you know what? I, what I remember is I remember. Um, no, I wouldn't say so much getting picked on, but uh, the kind of stuff like the boys would say. You know what I mean? Uh, or like, shut it fatty and all that. But is that gone? No, no, it's not gone. You did they press record on that? I didn't actually know that we were going to press record on that, so I think we'll, we'll just keep going, will we? Are we going to press record? I'll do that now, right? Yes. So I'm just going to do a wee until it's sh- uh, sc- <laughs> So for anyone just start uh, watching the YouTube video, hi. How you doing? We missed the guns earlier, we need to give them another, sh- another show. There we go. Bring it in, bring it in, there we go, size of them bad boys. I was just looking at that there and I was like, uh, I don't think that's recording. I'll just need to put up a picture of your ripped physique from the photo shoot <laughs> for the first <laughs> however, however long that was. I literally do not know if MD will want to watch that for what, how long we've been talking, 10 minutes if it's a video. Don't, don't, just need to. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Aye, sorry. So, so I was saying, you know, it's like some of the comments that folks say to you, right, like, you know, uh, oh, hurry up fatty and all that and you know so many boys and, and there's no malice an easy, in it. it's just an easy thing to say though to somebody that's overweight on it there's no malice in it you know and the boys are no hearts, but the boys are your pals and all the rest of it, but you know you, you, you get kind of a bit like oh, I'm kind of fed up with that now I don't want that kind of image if you know what I mean and then another thing too is like when you're going to buy trousers and shirts <laughs> for your work you're all done like size like 42 waists and all that you know yeah, what I mean been there. And uh, I think for me, the realisations hit in when I stepped in a set of scales and they come up and said 17 stone. And relatively, you're, you know, you're thinking, is that all right? I don't know that's all right. Because I don't really know much about health and fitness and what's good and what isn't. But looking at myself in the mirror and then adding the fact that I knew I was 17 stone and I just knew I had to do something about it. And... Um, and, you know, and, I, and I, I feel like I have done, so... 100%, mate. Smashed it. So, you said that you tried before uh-huh. and failed just due to known, maybe not knowing what to do, what to eat, going running and maybe not lasting, because running is pretty goddamn hard, especially right. when you're overweight. And smoking. Yeah, definitely, which you've now quit. That's right. You, had to sh- you stopped that throughout your transformation, didn't you? That's right, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's amazing, man. Two, two I've years, out. Right? Because I've been there as well, and I've, but I've smoked, and I know mm-hmm. how hard it is to stop that, that that habit, mate. So well done there. So you joined the, you joined training with me, an elite DC fitness, That's and <laughs> you obviously succeeded. Uh-huh. Why? Why was that different to when you tried to lose weight before? I think obviously. Well, I need to think then about what you know. I tell people about. You, I suppose, is, you know, the support there. Because I think that one of the things before you go on, sorry to interrupt there, man, but sometimes when friends contact me to train, Mm -hmm. doesn't always work out. It hasn't worked out with people in the past because it's hard to be hard on people sometimes when you know them personally. And I think that people that know me personally, maybe might not take me as seriously mm-hmm. as somebody they don't know right. or they might think they can get away with, with stuff which is, is a certain degree they probably could back then anyway they probably could right. when I wasn't very experienced especially somebody like yourself who was a close pal mm-hmm. um, but to be fair we never really had that issue well, maybe, we maybe at some we point through we, the we, we'll, we'll we touch on that we'll we touch on that those bits but the bits that we're talking about that we, right. o- we overcame but Aye, so what, like, obviously you did, you started at the start, 
he made amazing progress for the first wee mm-hmm. for the first while. It was just way off, way off, way yeah. off, way off. Um, so why so why was it different? Like I think, uh, I think obviously when you go and you have a a one to one session with somebody, right? Spe- so see if I bring actually bring my point back to I've tried before. I used to go running, right? Nothing was really happening. It was a bit sh- shit. You know, I would maybe run for like 10 minutes, think that was great, all the rest of it. Just go back and eat the same shit. I was eating, smoking the same cigarettes, drinking the same drink, all right. the rest of it. But, uh, and then I tried gyms as well. So I remember, I, it's funny, I actually came full circle. I tried a gym in Kilmarnock at the time. I think it was called um, Fitness First or something like that. And uh, I remember going into this gym and I was just overwhelmed by the equipment that was in the gym. It was actually quite off-putting, so to fall into my comfort zone when I went into the gym, the first thing I went into was a treadmill, because I knew how to yep. work a treadmill. Yep. But when I looked around about me, I was just overwhelmed by the equipment that was there and not knowing how to use yep. it. Yep. So um, so then obviously that puts you off, doesn't it? Of course. Do you know what I mean? So then obviously, you know, something comes up at the weekend, somebody's party, somebody's birthday, you know, you can't have it. Then you start just forming a habit of, I'm just no going, then you end up just cancelling a direct debit, you've been coming your account for 10 months, so you went for it like three times, do you totally know what I mean? Been there. Because you just, you're not educated, you don't know, you know, and it's easy to fall back into what you are comfortable with and avoid what you don't know. Yep, yep. And I think by going to see a PT, you get, there's a sense of accountability, like Scott touched on there, about maybe being hard on folk, he's not being hard, he's just holding them accountable for the journey they're on. Um, and actually direction, you know, I'm going to show you how to do this, but the account, you know, and, and I'm going to show you and give you the confidence when you go into that gym to walk up to that Smith machine and try those inclined bench presses or, you know, go up to the bench so and do things. So essentially, weights. Yeah, weights, aye. Because you enjoy it. Aye, I do enjoy and it. That's, that's obviously what a massive reason why you stuck to it in the first place. Because if I just had you running around the park, Aye. you might not enjoy that. And you might Aye. have said, well, I'm not coming back. No. I, I, I would have thought what my pint for. Mate, you enjoy <laughs> <laughs> I'd have honestly I'd have thought what my pint for here. Yeah. Aye. But, <laughs> but, you, but you enjoyed... No, I can't even afford to feed myself. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I think I could tell right away the, you, the, the buzz and the enjoyment you got Aye. off a of lifting... Lifting weights and, p- and feeling that, feeling that, just that feeling that you get when you when you lift something heavy and you feel the muscle tightening and yeah. a sense of achievement and you just start progressing up weights. I think that was massive for you because yeah. you started to see your body change. Your body adapted to weights really well. You could, your arms were changing yeah. right at the start. You could see that Shoulders. your body fat was coming off, and yeah. we, we hadn't really got too deep into the nutrition at this point. And uh, you could see you were you were coming in. Every time you were coming in, you were mm. going different, and you were, you were getting le- you were getting leaner. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I think the weights for you was a big a big reason of why it was different for you, which is where a lot of people fall down because they're going. To, uh, a lot of people go on to straight to the cardio machines aye. and they don't enjoy it. But I think it's because enjoy it, you're not going to keep at it. I think it's because if you think about what I spoke about earlier, when you when you imagine going, well, you remember going to a gym. When of course, you, see when you your 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 when you were right at your fattest. Do you know what I mean? Which is really big, oh right? Thanks, yeah. um, and you're eating a drink and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> 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 you probably walked in. Like you see, in the days you probably walked in that gym. I kind of fucking strong bone your hands. Well, but, I didn't do that, but aye. I did go to the gym once at uh, seven in the morning when I'd had an all nighter bevying aye. up to about six, aye. and I spewed everywhere. Aye, I don't know why I was drunk. I'm, I'm going to train. I need to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, Honestly, that's not a word that but you know, just think, you know, for you know, you're, you're maybe never been in a, f- a, a facility yep. like a gym before, and the stigma that s- surrounds a gym is, you know, and then you know, a big part of that is bloody fucking TV into it, and <laughs> everybody on TV is like ripped six packs, and they all go to gyms, and they all go to do this, and they, you know, do this, and but see, actually, when you walk into any place, right, and you actually just see it for what it is. There's all shapes and sizes there. There's old folk, young folk, middle-aged folk, there's guys, <laughs> women, there's all shapes and sizes. And I think um, when you just persevere and take yourself out of your comfort zone 
and try some of the Scots stuff. When I, when I used to try some of the stuff you'd tell me. And I, I used to never want to go over the weights, but at the start, remember, I, 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 I would just fall back at my corner, just to, just to, just to the, the cardio, just to the cardio. But then I thought, no, if I want to progress, I need to go into the weights. Um, and then it, when you take yourself out your comfort zone, the more you do it, it starts becoming comfortable. Totally. Um, and I just get a buzz out of it, and it actually isn't anything better than... You need to take yourself out of comfort zones in life. You need to. If you don't, you're, f- you're just never going to move forward in any area, yeah, are you? you whether, it's, yeah. whether it's training, work, relationships, whatever it may be, 100%. man. 100%. You need to take yourself out of comfort zones. And that's something that dramatically changed in my mindset when I started training. I, I, anything I was scared of doing, I wouldn't do. Unless I was wrecked. Oh, which is a bad no thing because... I, but, oh, I, but when I started training, and basically I keep telling me, having somebody to tell me, just do it, like, yeah. get it done, with, you know, what is the worst that can happen, well, you do it, and it's fine, and then you enjoy it, and then you start doing more and more, and then you start That's applying right. for new jobs, because you're believing in yourself yeah, totally. again, and you're out of your comfort zone, and I, but take yourself out of your comfort zone, it's massive, man, it has to be done. So, I, I think my, I think a, really a big part of it was obviously, um, as you say, the direction, the somebody holding you, holding you accountable, uh-huh. coming in, getting mm. asked, let's see your food diary, let's see your training numbers, because mm-hmm. if there's nobody to tell you, yeah. um, to ask you if you've done it, what well, it's too easy to, to, to not do it if you're feeling a bit mm-hmm. tired or you're so too, you're wanting a pizza or something like that. Well, it was obviously the whole, you know, um, you're obviously pay, you're paying for something as well, you know, you're and I don't know why I let you down, obviously, it was a big motivation for me because we've got personal, you know, history, but you're actually paying for something, you actually see the benefits of it, Definitely. and then actually, when you start seeing the benefits of it, you're actually paying the service that you're getting for a PT, it actually, you're like, you know, this is working, I'm going to keep doing this because I can see this working, and totally. it's a good feeling, you know, but I've had my ups and downs, I can see your next question on there. Aye. So, uh, so I think the Campbelltown thing, you moved, you get seconded there co- really early, pretty much right at the start of the training uh, t- with me. T- t- 2000, the back end of 2013. Aye, but I, it was I think maybe you actually started with me when you were in Campbelltown. I think I started with you, Scott, in about January or February or something like 2014. Because you were coming in, I was having to come in, you were dragging me in here at weekends. That's right. Because uh, I didn't work the weekend, but you wanted to make a change and I'm like, ah, I want to help you. You need to help me. <laughs> you, need, you, need to help me. you need to help me, Scott. You I did want. I did. Wa- <laughs> I did want to. I really want. Hence why I went in on Sunday for for one for one person. Um, but it was because you were in Campbelltown and you were only yeah. home at the weekends. But I think that that was a big thing for you to take that on when you were in Campbelltown because you were yourself. Right. No pals, because you right. didn't know anything. Eh? You were only there for a, a, a small amount of time, so you weren't you weren't yeah. like up in your whole life and gone. You were right. just you knew you were there short term, and you said to yourself, "I don't end up, you know, bevying all the I time here." It's funny because th- I thought, you know, in the total I was here eighteen months, um, and you're right, you know, I'd come home at the weekends if I could, if the road was aye, open. Aye, some weeks you know, some, week, some weeks I wouldn't come home, but you know, but. Uh, <coughs> I probably made a choice there, I think, as well. I could have thought, you know, I'm a kind of kind of life, you know, point where I thought, this this town's no good. It's a lovely place, right? So if any folk fussing with Camelton, it's never a lovely been place. Never um, but it, it, there's no other, when you're used to what I'm used to, and then you go to something that's a bit slower paced. Um, there's only not a lot you can do, and uh, I just kind of thought, right, I'm going to end up in the pub every night after work. Yep. Because uh, I was on my own, as I said, you know, I had my own wee gaff. Uh, or I can go to the gym after work, and that's what I did. I chose to go to the gym. I don't get me wrong, I still went to the pint, uh, for a pint in the pub, you know, now and again, but I predominantly would go to the gym yeah, every I remember every that, night. mate. I remember you were, you were <coughs> smashing the gym in Campbelltown, yeah. and I think that's a massive reason why yeah. you done so well because uh, you want you were <laughs> where you are after it. <laughs> Mind that time I went to the gym in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So there was this one morning, I think you'd had a bad couple of days or something like that and you were I was telling him like, mate, just get in the morning for work, smash it. Yeah. You know, you'll feel better. And then um, you were on the you were on Snapchat and uh, right, you were yeah. giving me a, a kinda bit by bit documentation of your morning. You were like ah, 
getting up in my bed, getting up, going five to kill it. Morning. Five in the morning. Up. Here's my breakfast. Bake the eggs. Going yeah. to smash it. Here's my water. On the way to the gym. Feel like Rocky. Yeah, actually, and then the next one, you stood there a wee sad face. The gym's closed. Didn't didn't open seven o'clock in the morning. I'm stood on the side at six in the morning. That was <laughs> <laughs> so I get in. I just I think I went. I that loved run. that story, man. Aye, that was so funny. I back to the house and I was like, oh, oh man. But anyway, I checked that. But, um, but I remember, aye, you were killing it in Campbelltown mm-hmm. in the gym sense. And then, as I said, that's a massive part of why you've done so well because mm-hmm. you use that time instead of just getting bevied mm-hmm. or getting home and watching the telly because mm-hmm. you're bored and nothing to do. You chose that time to be productive. You chose, the, you chose to work on yourself. Aye, totally. And you had that focus, man. And um, that's, that was amazing. But then, obviously, you moved back to Glasgow, mm-hmm. and I think out your whole time with the, from when you started to when you done your photo shoot, I think that particular time mm-hmm. was when we had the most trouble. Aye, well that was a difficult one because obviously my ups and downs, you know, th- when I was in Campbelltown, it was mentally stressful for me because I was with my family, you know, and the job was quite difficult. I was known to turn to, you know, the part of Scott every other night trying to ask him what, I, uh, an overhead extension dumbbell tri dip man or something like that, you know. Or how to cook broccoli. Or how to cook broccoli, <laughs> I, never, I knew how to cook broccoli. I don't think you did, no, no, I I never mind. Aye, just, just put it in the microwave. So, uh, no, so, then obviously <laughs> I, I, I did well in that job and I moved on to a job but I had moved back to Glasgow. Or Kelly. Yeah. That was Glasgow. Oh, yeah. Aye, so I moved back to Glasgow, so it's based in St. Finch Street, do you remember? And then, um, however, my job took me all over the UK for the, the guts of a year, but when I came back, the training did slow down a bit. Um, and the diet. The diet. That was the, the that diet. That was the big one, man. The diet slowed down a wee bit. Um, for some reason at that period, I remember there was just a lot of parties at the weekend. There must have been a lot of birthdays every weekend and uh, weddings and things it's like that. I was invited to. Um, I hence the reason why I was out in the bevy every weekend. It I know that fault. you still wanted to to do it. I know that you were still trying hard, but if things were just getting top of you, and you were no, you were no behaving yourself really, were you? <laughs> no, I was, I was being And it was frustrating, man, because you, you had the potential there, because I seen how well you'd done it at the start, yeah. and I saw how well you trained in Campbelltown. I'm right in I it. I saw how awesome you smashed the diet, and all of a sudden you were coming in, and the things were only getting ticked <laughs> off, and we were, we were having arguments, weren't we? We were literally Aye. in this room, Aye. having some awkward times because Aye. I was frustrated. You know that. You know what I'm like. Like I care a lot about Aye, totally. about what 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 my clients, how they progress. I don't want people that's to pay me money and not get anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm passionate, man. And like mm-hmm. that's why that's why it spills over sometimes because mm-hmm. you're sitting there thinking yourself, he's a break probably when. But I'm I'm knowing that you're not doing what I'm asking you to yeah. do, but you're telling me that you want to make progress. But I it just know, wasn't it happening like for weeks and weeks and months. I remember we sat down here and you, you did, you, you know, had the conversation with me and you said to me, well, I'm going to give you a couple of weeks just to think Aye. about what you want to do Aye. and you know, and if you don't come back, you don't come back. Because you were sitting there going, maybe a bit skint at the end of the month and all that kind of thing. And I'm like, well, I don't want to take your cash off you. Just don't get it. <laughs> if you're not going pro- to, if you're not going to get to where you want to be, what's Aye. the point? Um, at, but at the same time, I was trying to use that to motivate you to s- say, uh-huh. no, I'll p- prove to you that I want this, which ultimately is obviously what you did. Well, that's what happened, obviously, because I remember coming back to my like mate, what click to say it yourself? What, what made you go, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do this, I'm going to stop the nonsense at the weekends, and I'm going to basically start n- nailing my food properly? Because it was an issue with your food as well, you weren't, you, weren't, you weren't tracking it properly and stuff. Well, I think obviously everything you've just, uh, but so essentially uh, the job I was in was difficult again, but you know, listen, hey, we've all got difficult jobs, you know, um, and I wasn't giving it the time I should, def- and I'm talking about the fitness element and the diets element of uh, the journey that I was on, it was more work focused and just want a good night's sleep and lie on the couch and do nothing, you know, and, and go to my pals at the weekend and that, you know, but, and then I thought, no, I'm not doing that because I want I want to have a slimmer body. I want to have I want to look better. I want to feel better. I could see the benefits of it, and it was just a total mindset change. I think you know. I just think it was like no. 
you know, this is important now. Um, and you're passionate about it as well. So having a PT actually that's passionate about you and actually cares about you um, was 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 important. And there's a you know, and I just thought you know no 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 this isn't happening. And I was like I just remember saying right this is it. We're getting the food in. We're getting the food s sorted out. We're going to start um, tracking things. I'm going to get to the gym. I'm going to do my stuff. And my, f my, and my mind just totally flipped to, it was crazy. It right. was it was like proper, just, it was just a total mindset shift. And um, I just focused more energy. I, I didn't take any energy away from my work or my relationships or anything like that, but I just focused more of it into my fitness. Totally, man. But like, I think that as much as I was giving you a hard time at the time, because I saw your potential, I knew where you could mm. end up being. And what you said at the very start, if I could do it, you could do it. Uh, How many times did I tell you that back then? I'm like, I know ah, you're like, ah, I, don't know, I, just, I don't know if I could do this. I'm like, if uh, I can do it, me, remember the guy that was falling about the bank? Pretty <laughs> 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 right, much the whole bank. <laughs> you can do it, you know, you're a sensible guy. Mm -hmm. you're, um, I, but I knew you had, I knew you had a stressful job and I knew you were getting punted all over the shop uh, with where you were working. It was your motor seemed to break down every two weeks oh, or something like that. That's a brand new motor. Thing. Um, there was always something getting mm -hmm. in the way, but for s but but for some something happened. I remember my dad. He dad was ill. Yeah, he's ill. Yeah, I remember that. And um, something happened, and you changed the mindset, and you chose to nail the diet, nail the training, instead mm -hmm. of yeah. oh, you know what, I'll be lazy. And thank God, because let me ask you this question. Are you happy with what your lifestyle is like now? Oh, 100%. Are you I, happy? I'm actually saying that with a smile. You can see that. I'm actually <laughs> saying that with a smile on my face. Are you happy with how you feel waking up in the morning, looking at yourself in the mirror, going to work in your nice tight fitted suits? Ah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Ah, I mean, it's. Can you imagine it's throwing all that food. away just because you get like a drink at the weekend? Ah, no, it's unbelievable, honestly. It's, it, it's a bizarre feeling and it, it's been a long journey for me, you know, because obviously, like some living away from Campbelltown, this job took me all over the UK. I was living in hotels a lot, remember? Yeah. Um, you know, so, and I would be getting frustrated, remember? And I was saying, oh, these guys, I'm seeing these guys on this internet site that I've got a ripped uh, in abs in 12 weeks and all that. But you'd start realising that's all the bullshit, didn't you? And then my, my journey was just different to everybody else's because totally everybody's di the journey's different. And um, probably for me, when we I realised actually that my journey was unique, and th my, so my journey wasn't even Mikey's journey, it wasn't, a, um, you know, Stu's journey, it wasn't a, all these other clients you had, it was my journey, I, I was like, ah, well, no, I'm not, I'm, I, totally. need, I, need, I need to enjoy it, and I started enjoying it, and then it's not about our feeling. You, you went for a guy who was the, could even fill out a food day, and I mean, eat properly to a guy that was whipping up meals that uh, I was shocked with, like, you were uh, sending me photos of all these meals. Uh, they were brilliant, man. And they were, you were like, ah, yeah, it's only X amount of calories. And, uh, um, you know, you really started to... Well, I learned how to cook that shit. Well, aye, aye. <laughs> obviously, you did. Uh, aye, aye, aye. That, I, I think you, you always talk about all the, a couple of recipe books you had. Uh, obviously, they just helped. They just changed how you... Just awesome, man, because... How you were eating. They were amazing because, like... Obviously, everybody just thinks they get skinny or something. For some reason, it's like it's chicken and rice, chicken and rice, chicken and rice, right? chicken and rice with broccoli. Right? You know, ah, it's and totally it's just totally it's, 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 and, and it's not like that because see if you eat like that, it gets boring. It does what? MD would get oh, MD would, work, would yeah. get ripped eating chicken and broccoli and rice all day. Uh -huh. But it isn't good, is it? Like no, eating the same thing all the time and. The flexibility aspect where you can fill up your calories and your yeah. and your macronutrient intake with your own meals works for the majority mm -hmm. of people and you thrived on that because again you were sending me pictures ago look at this homemade pizza look at this curry look at yeah. this that and i was like ah, mate, this is epic, this is brilliant, turkey man. bolognese a lot and it was and it was a were. couple of books just a couple of books and i just went out and bought the ingredients bought all the wee spices and the wee mixes it's stuff easy. that you need and then you've got it, it's and easy. then just then you need to see. So, so all you had to do at that point then was just go and buy meat and tomatoes or meat and something because you had all this stuff. You were prepped. You just made the food, made it for four. So you was loving it, you know, because it's nice cooking you're doing. You know, you're enjoying it because you're cooking stuff that you're getting. You know, it's a it's bit like um, it's kind of a wee. What's the word I'm looking for? Therapeutic. 
in a way. Aye, that's see, definitely. You, I, I get put like podcasts, I put podcasts on when I'm cooking and stuff because, you know, by the time you're prepping all the vegetables mm-hmm. and cutting stuff up, frying it's stuff, all in oven, the prep. it takes a wee bit of time. Mm-hmm. So, see a podcast, music, even get the iPad on top of the microwave and stick, uh, stick a sky go or something and just get to it. Like, Aye. Um, well, my standard doesn't actually take that long. My standard on a Sunday's get all the, the stuff prepped, get the, 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 the music on the phone, get it coming through the sound bar, whatever, bang, get the frying pan on, or, 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 you know, get the meat in, get the stuff cooked, or it, and it's probably, it's just, it's just no better feeling. The diet definitely helped because obviously, as I said, you went through somebody who was majorly struggling to keep in ch- his diet in check to somebody who was instantly smashing the calories where mm-hmm. you had to stay at to lose the fat and eating epic meals. But I think, out with that, I could just, I could see you every week just believing in yourself Aye. more and mm-hmm. being more confident totally. because you were, n- you were knuckling down, you are losing the fat, you started to fit into Aye. smaller clothes and you were coming in. Just that you, were came, you used to come in and go, I knew you were dreading it because you weren't maybe doing everything properly and maybe no making progress at this point. And then when you started nailing it, you were coming in, a smile on your face, going, look at this new top I've bought. Aye, that's right. Wearing vests. Aye. But actually thinking to yourself, I, I remember you turned around and go, you actually said to me, I don't hate myself anymore. Aye, that's and right. And that was a massive Aye. one because uh, you started to love yourself mm-hmm. and that's a massive thing when a transformation, Aye. man. Brilliant, because, you see, we daft things like, so I remember, uh, was it last year? Aye. 2016, it's Christmas night out with, the, with work. Um, I remember, well, obviously, you go out and you buy new clothes for the Christmas <laughs> night out, don't you? You know what I mean? Quite like your besties. Uh, uh, exactly. So I remember going into Burton's with Ian, my pal, and then I went into Burton's and I bought, I picked up, a, I thought it was a size 34 waist, right? But we'll see where I started my journey. I was a size 38. But uh, I remember going to get a pair of jeans and I, I, I pulled them up, right? They were pure hanging off me. P- p- 34. So I remember going out and saying to the guy, Look, are these too big for me? The buttons guy, he's like, ah, they're massive, mate. So at that point, I was like, let's try a size 32. And, and it fitted me like a glove. And I just, <laughs> thought, you know, I just thought, I never thought in my life I'd be wearing a size 32. Waist. And it would fit nice and all the rest of it. So, and they were like 90 pound. And I just felt like, do you know what? Eh? I've, I've, I'm going to buy them. Good. I, f- I feel like I need to. Good, mate. Because it's a treat to myself. Aye. And then I'm going for large, extra large shirts to large. So that Christmas night, we had a medium shirt on. Perfect, do you know what I mean? Man. And I, I felt, and, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I knew I looked good. It's a great feeling, man, because I've been there, just been like, Gone shopping and hating it, man, because you want to, you see things and you know, I can't, get, I can't get away with that, or you just don't feel. Everybody will go, Oh, you do, you look fine, but in yeah, yourself, if yeah. you don't feel good about yourself, man, you're not going to want to wear it, man. Yeah, so when you start to, even to this day, see putting on a nice fitted t shirt and mm-hmm. going out, I love that because I never used to do, be able to do that because yeah. I, could just, I just couldn't, man, with how I felt in regards to my own body. And I still think about that every time I put a t shirt on and I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm, I love, I, I love the fact that I feel yeah. good doing this now because uh, I spent awesome. so many years of my life it is, it is feeling really, really anxious good. about it. Ah, it's amazing. It's really, really good. But uh, you definitely, you definitely start. But I think you, you know, you're cool. You're, I think you're getting a bit big headed these days with the guns, man. You know, obviously yeah. you're, uh, you're a bit big for. No, I'm kidding. I'm yeah, a bit big for my shirts now. Oh, because I put a bit big for your shirts. Just two shirts I've ripped. Keep at it, man. It's uh-huh. a good, it's a good sign when you're ripping the shirts uh, with you your you lats. Can, you can pay for them. Aye, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay, next part we're going on to the photo shoot, man. Because ultimately what we're working towards your transformation was to show off, I mean, somebody goes through a transformation as big as yourself in regards Aye. to not only how you look, but lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, what? what's unique about Elite is we obviously offer the photo shoot part of it where you get professional photos um, to show that off. So that was the goal. Um and I've been there as a client. I've, I've been there coaching people, and it's not easy. No, no, it is not easy, mate. It's it's a hard thing because we want you looking the best for the shoot, and you want to get as uh, get as best condition as we can. Mm-hmm. So we go for it. Like we set a goal, and we go, "You're going to look like that." Mm-hmm. And but it's hard. Aye, it's dedication. It? Mm-hmm. It's tiring. 
you need you do need to sacrifice some some stuff sometimes in regards to obviously nights out and stuff like that. Of course, you're getting to your shoot, you can't really afford to go on mad nights out mm-hmm. and set yourself back. So, but at the same time, as much as it's hard, it's great because you start to you start to find things out about yourself mm-hmm. and you start like the belief when you start to see those changes and you think to yourself, mm-hmm. well, I actually worked my arse off for this and I Aye, said no totally. to that pizza and I said no to those drinks to Aye. get here like you start believing in yourself not only in training but with Aye. everything else applying for job as I said before applying for better jobs just because you think well, I mm-hmm. can do anything that's how I felt Aye. how did how did it help you with um or what did it help you with in regards to like just confidence belief and work and stuff like that the like photo shoot the prep the prep oh, the pre- like pre- Nailing the prep and the prep as hard as it was, like. Aye. But I think obviously, I think after Christmas, um, I knew it was coming. I think you, you, you know, we talk about it, we talk about it, we talk about the shoot. There's a shoot coming up, you know. But you don't really think in your mind this is going to actually materialise. You probably you know? don't see yourself because you you've maybe seen the other guys and thought, oh, that's, I can't uh, get into that shape. No, that's totally, mate. Totally, that's that's what you're thinking. A lot of pressure. Well, not a lot of pressure. That's that's wrong. It's there's a lot you want it really bad, but there's also temptation out there, isn't there? You know, uh-huh. so these things, these things, unfortunately, do set you back, and it's just fact. So, but uh, I think after Christmas, you know, I think we, we had a wee chat about the photo shoot, and you said, right, it's happening Marchy time, you know, February, March, we're going to go for. I think that was just a a switch just clicked, and I thought, right, this is it. Time to this down. is time to knuckle down. Not that you were at that point, uh, but, but time to really, it does sh- take really that extra, doesn't it? It was really time to tighten the screws, oh, and you know, sharpen the pencil. And I thought, this, I need. It's important, actually. Yep. This is imp- this is. If it wasn't important before, this is super important. But you wanted it, man. Ah, yeah. You know, well, I, well, I signed up for it, oh. so it was my choice. I know you never asked me to train me. You asked you to train me. Totally, so right. I, you've always got to remember that as well. Totally. So I says, yeah, right, okay, well, let's do it. So the prep involved for the photo shoot was, you know, but I got a lot of help from Scott, a lot of moral support. I used to kind of step up the, the times I would come in and see him, you know, more often. I keep in contact with you, you know, phone you every now and again, give you a phone, especially at the weekends, you know, when it was difficult at the weekends because you couldn't go. It's a hard it's not that you, it's not that you, you can't go out, right? You can go out, but. I think we're all lying if we say we're going to have one drink at somebody's 30th birthday party or something like that. But it's, it's, this doesn't work, you know. Um, you I can think have fun with alcohol. You can have fun. <laughs> yeah, you can have fun. And I did have a lot of fun with the alcohol and the preps up to the shoot. So, um, But it was just sharpening the pencil time for me, really. The, it, it was like the, the grand finale was approaching and I wanted to look my best for it. So I was... I was watching everything I was eating. I was using my fitness pal. Everything was getting into my fitness pal. It was really helpful. Um, and then obviously the day of the shoot. You want to talk about it just now? Are you? No, no. Just I was, the main thing for this is like, what did you get out of the prep? Because as I was saying, for me, I got the sense of I can do this, man, and that I can do anything. I totally. I, that that actually happens bizarrely because. See, when you start nailing it, you start coming every week, and you can actually visually see yourself looking a lot in leaner. ways you'd only dreamed of. And totally. I mean, I, had, like, I was getting like a, you know, the V in the abs. Yep. You know, I was like, well, I remember coming to the show one day, I'm like, what the hell is that? Where's that coming from? <laughs> you know, it was awesome. And then, obviously, you're, you're, you're getting thinner, you're starting to get, you know, a bit veinier, and it's just, you just start to feel your face is getting thinner, you're putting your shorts on, you're just like, this is awesome, man. But that's difficult. Oh, I'll, I'll know. I'll but look it to that. It isn't easy. But Hence why not that many people, you know, have got to that stage in regards mm-hmm. to the amount of people that have started a transformation and actually got to the shoot yeah. because it's difficult, man. And then, you know, if it was easy, obviously we'd all be cutting about in superb, in on. superb yeah. shape. But to get, like, to maintain a great physique, in my opinion, is is easier than getting to that physique in the first mm-hmm. place if you've been especially if you've been overweight and if you've yeah. had a bit of a kind of bad lifestyle in the past because obviously you've abused your body for a certain amount of right. for a certain amount of years and that but um but the next the next part I want to talk about is um the long slows on your shoot on your prep shoot, Aye. shoot. Awesome. <laughs> prep follow shoot. Yep. I found long slows for me 
something that gave me a bit of time to myself and a bit of time to reflect and a bit of time to think about the day ahead, the week ahead, whatever it may be, and to learn podcasts, music, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. We brought them into your prep, mo- mainly because you're setting to the job mm-hmm. and you weren't even moving much, so we had to get you burning more test calories. Test job. I had to get you burning more calories, so we had you on long slows, which is just basically a form of cardio where it's, it's low intensity, um, it's not stressful, it doesn't take much out of you, but it is time consuming. Yeah. But the time consuming factor is taken away if you use it productively. Mm-hmm. Talk to us. 100%. I mean, the, uh, the long slows for me was a time, a time, was a, I said a really good time to reflect and a bit of me time, if you know what I mean. It was because you were, ha- I mean, I, I, Scott knows, I like the weights and I hammer, I was hammering what I was doing on very low calories. I was probably doing. Too much, too heavy for the amount of calories I was on, and I've obviously subsequent we'll talk about that um, as we kind of move on. But um, then I would go and do my long slow, and it was actually a release because I thought my body was loving it. It was like this, I like this. This is a nice slow pace to walk to. You can stick the headphones in, you can listen to a podcast, you can watch a film on your phone these days. You know, it's touched on it. We in the last podcast about motivation grid yeah. like self-belief stuff like uh-huh. you kind of how epic do you feel after doing it uh-huh. knocking it along slow but listening to something that's motivational like that Aye, I, mean, I would recommend that to anybody even if they're not dieting right and there's a lot of great things out there that you can do like um you know if you go into netflix there's a lot of documentaries about how people have come over a lot of adversity and challenges and, and came out the other end and it, they're quite inspiring and see when you're doing the a preparation up to a photo shoot when you're eating the, a rigid amount of calories you're doing a lot of training you're you know spending a lot of time with your partner or you know at your, at your, at your work or you're at the gym you know that's that's what you're doing but it's quite inspiring because you know there's going to be a happy ending and the happy ending is the photo shoot totally um so i i, I you know long souls are so important but probably a lot more for me it was for good for my mental state but it's just trying you need to that you need fit that them in yeah it's tough to fit them in when you've got a busy job and you've got a partner and all the rest of it but at the same time like as you just said like it's important to fit them in because i i, I, f- I find them just so good for mm-hmm. headspace mental health and um, just a bit of chill out you know what i mean know. especially if it's um if it's nice outside you can yeah. get outside and do it it's like I would recommend it as I said to Andy, not even who maybe isn't even dieting. I still do them. And if it's mm-hmm. nice, I will walk to work, which is an hour. Ah, it's because magic. I need that time, man. I need that time to think and listen to a yeah. podcast and stuff like that because it can't just always be just going mental, you know, all the time and not having that slow down kind of, right, okay, I'm just going to fucking chill out here. Oh, well, you're absolutely right. Because I think, obviously, I was at a, I think at a work the other day there and it was about well being. And we were talking about actually your physical health also your mental health you know, everybody's got mental health you know of course. and it's important you know that when you're physically physically attacking your body with weights all the time all these heavy you know things and, and dieting <laughs> and dieting as well and also your your work for seven eight nine hours that day and your brain's getting it see actually going and just saying right i'm going to do a bit my weights i'm going to do my long slow see the actual see if you thought you were stressed before you went into the gym, I can categorically guarantee you, you will be de-stressed when you leave the gym because you, you, about um, you will release loads of chemicals that your body is going to absolutely love you for um, and it helps your mental health. And, and I can ca- ca- I was in dark places when I worked in Campbelltown because I was away out there on yep. loan. I was in dark places when I worked as the, in that job in Glasgow, but it took me all over the UK. Um, and then recently I've been in some dark places in my work where it's not been nice, it's not been a great atmosphere, but I've went to the gym, I've done what I needed to do, and then I've walked out in, and been felt proud of myself, and I, I just, I get a better night's sleep. It's weird. And actually when I walk in the door, nine times out of ten, I'm no crab it, because I've let it out in the gym. So when I'm with, with, my, with my partner, she's not getting it either, because, you know, like, she's not getting all my moans of the days, because <laughs> I took them out in the gym. Huh? Totally, man, you know I remember. I mean? so, but Before I was important. doing all this, I was like yourself on the bank and it was a sales job and it was so 
fucking stressful, man. And uh, I used to turn to alcohol to de-stress me, which would only make things worse. And then when I gave up the drink and started training, my God, man, what a difference. That's awesome. What a difference, man. Like, going to the gym before work sometimes, just getting into work in a better mood. Aye, it's just aye. it's brilliant for mental health. For, like, just, you, you need to... You need to um, you need to give yourself you time. I think the gym for that you time is a yeah. great idea, and you've just explained why. So yeah, I'll go into it again. But so there was tough times during the shoot prep. Obviously, there's always going to be times where you doubt yourself. You're going to want to give into the temptation. You've yeah. got me on your shoulder, going, "Don't do that! Don't do that!" Um, and then you bloody went to the gym and tried to do a ridiculous weight. Stop looking at your phone, we're busy yeah. here. I know, I know. You went, <laughs> <laughs> you went to the gym, yeah. done a ridiculous weight, yeah. and injured yourself, didn't you? I done, I done myself, I tore my retainer cuff, an absolute peach. Three weeks out from a photo shoot where the training is pretty important, yeah. you could not train. I could not train my upper body, more or less whatsoever. How did you get through that? Not only that, but the other tough times, oh, even before that, when you were struggling with tiredness, hunger. I think, I th- I, you know, it's bizarre because it's like, it does become quite addictive though, you know, and the, the, the when you start seeing the results, it can come be quite addictive. So you, you don't really want to just kind of patch it because you feel tired. Because actually, you know, see if you are feeling shitty and feeling tired or See if you actually go to the gym and just reach a bit deeper down, because your body can take a lot of punishment, believe me. Your body, see if you right think man. you're tired, you're not. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're right, man. Um, if you are uninspired. You're uninspired, that's right. If you think you're tired, you're not tired. You're just bored or Especially if you've had a decent night's sleep, like maybe if you're not sleeping, then obviously I, I'll give you that, you're tired. But yeah. if you're sleeping okay, yeah. you're probably just fucking tired for staring at a screen all day or something. Ah, you're, you know, your body's just turning into it's just it's just you know it's not it's not energized and it's got no need to and i think see we actually go to the gym and you you, you, you feel better and because it, it, it does it, it just makes you feel better so when the tough times for me when the shitty days at work or you know with the injury because that injury really 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 pissed me off i know mate um, <laughs> pissed me off too <laughs> uh, and you know and it was really bad because i was a guy that was used to lifting you know 80 kilos and I bench, no bother. I couldn't even lift a bar, the, the 20 kilo bar. Man. That's how bad that injury was. Oh, and it's still to this day not healed, but we're getting there. Oh, you're, you're almost um, there, man. But I just thought in the tough times, you know, on the way to the photo shoot, I thought, I'm not giving up now. This has been a couple of years down the line here. I've got my PT that I want to, you know, have a happy. And coach. I, and it's a, my coach. And I, I want, it's for me now. This is all about me. And that kind of leads on the day of the shoot, didn't it, you, you want to talk about? Yes, I had something else in my head there, as you were talking. And it's out of my head now, man, so we might come back okay. to that one. We might come back to it. Kind of been that important then. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, the shoot day. Aye. Like, I don't think people realise what an amazing time and what an amazing day a shoot day is. It's a celebration of someday working their fucking arse off for months in your case Aye. years and that's what i was talking about that's what i was thinking there. we'll come back to it maybe after this one then um shoot day mate did you enjoy it loved it brilliant wasn't absolutely it? Loved it. you like are the star it, for like, the day totally man the only you know the, you, I, I, you know it's all about me it was all about me too right man and i just thought you know i work with i've got like nine folk in my team you know work or something like that and it's usually all about them you know it's never about me it's never what i want and that day I turned up and I had a big smile on my face. I actually had like butterflies in my stomach the night no before and all that. And Posing yeah. in front of a camera, man, it's, uh, well, one, it's uh, scary and it could be nervous, but what a buzz as well. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, I was, I was, I was proud as fuck that day, man. Know. You know what I mean? We'd done it. We'd done it. We've made it. And, uh, <laughs> no we've been talking about it for fucking years. We fucking got there, man. We then. fucking did, mate. And um, it, was, it, was a great, it was a great day for me. It must have been even better for you. Oh, it was awesome. I just remember, obviously, going in and all the, the photo sheets were up. And it's, this, a, it's a the, buzz, isn't it, man? The cameras were there and, the, you know, and all the rest of it. And then, obviously, he get, you know, you got stripped down to your pants and get some black bag contraption and then go and get your spray tan on. And that was probably, like... <laughs> 
I actually run up to the pray, this prayer time. I remember being in the toilet and saying to Zoe, like in my house, and I'm like, it's the night before, a couple of nights before, I'm like, Zoe, like, you're going to need to shave my back. You know, because Scott's like totally right and I saw shaved. And it was just well, like a strange feeling. So I understand anybody who has a fear of doing that. But mm. see, at the end of the day, like, see, once it was off, yeah. how much better do you look? Oh, honestly, right, I can. Your I legs, can, can, your legs especially, man. Coming for a thirty-four-year-old guy that would never have told you, like, four years ago, a year ago, to shave your or, or wax your chest hair off or something like that. But see, when you're working out, and see, when you're working out and you're feeling good about yourself, and all this, and you see a bit of definition, you know, get it off because it looks totally, better. Totally, man, and it grows back. It grows back anyway, it grows back. It grows back so. And one of the major fears for people, especially, obviously girls when we worry about this, but guys, a tan, right? And I know you were shiting yourself and all, thinking, am I going to look daft? And <laughs> people slag me, blah, blah, blah. But again, see when you've got that tan, you look at yourself in the mirror. Ah, I awesome. bet you fucking loved it. <laughs> I, I remember actually we get the tan and she's like, ah, she was laughing. She was, cause I was like, oh, oh God. And she's like, no, you're going to look good on it. So she's, she actually, she actually look good to know without the tan. And I'm like, how pale am I, Scott? I mean, look, I'm, I'm so, I'm almost transparent. I'm so <laughs> pale. Pretty white. Ah, exactly. So, must, I must so, say. Um, so when I got the tan on, I went through, just my face was just lit up because I just seen all these curves and bumps. You look, you, you look like somebody in a magazine, mate. Ah, it was awesome. You looked like somebody in a fitness magazine. Mm -hmm. And for a cut a year ago to that, what a feeling, man. Oh, it was great. Brilliant, so, man. Aye, it was good, but I loved it. And uh, the, the tan was brilliant as well. And actually, you know, I was actually quite loving the tan for the, for the few days it followed. Super, you know what I mean? Because we, yeah, it was we, we hold the tan, but, um, but it's a great day and you held yourself together well. It's no easy posing for oh, those for those 40s oh. because you've got, to, you've got to contract your legs, your arms, your abs at the same time. Oh, but you've done practice. superb. And... For anybody who's not seen them, just um, go onto my Facebook or Instagram and look for Stevie Shoot. They're all there, and uh, he looks absolutely superb. And mm -hmm. especially the uh, the before and after is is epic, man. And you've inspired a lot of people. There's people that I train who say that you're literally their hero uh, after know, seeing you do that, man, because that's what they're aspiring to, mm -hmm. obviously. And you lost about five stone, and um, it's more than that because the amount of muscle that you've put uh, on, you're, you're huge, man. You know what I mean? Your shoulders and your arms and your mm -hmm. back and everything. Like is you put a lot of muscle on, so you think about the amount of body fat you right. lost on top of that. It was uh, it was amazing, and you you inspired me, mate. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I was standing watching you every week coming in. You're saying food's been brilliant, training smashed. I'm on it. I'm mm -hmm. on it, and I know yeah. how hard that is, man. Especially when there's people bringing in Greg's donuts. They are working on the regular, and uh -huh. pals asking yeah. you out for a drink, and your missus probably want a wee meal out. Um. And you were just so dedicated, but you got the results, you got the photos, Aye, and you so can look back on them whenever you want, Aye. when you're 40, 50, 60, 70, and go, look, look what I achieved Aye, and I the shape I've gone to, that before photo, do you Aye. know what I mean? Aye, but I'm not finished yet. S not finished yet, which we'll touch on at the end. Um, what I was going back to, what I forgot about earlier, was the time frame, because mm -hmm. I think you were sometimes getting a bit down about the amount of time it was taking to get you there, especially when you'd seen somebody come in and do a shoot within six months. Aye. But it's totally different and everybody's so different. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing about your time frame, man, is that it doesn't matter how long it took, mm -hmm. your transformation is not just a physical transformation, you change your whole life. Aye, exactly. You change your whole life, man, from somebody who was not living a healthy lifestyle who was only getting mm -hmm. bigger in a, f in a body fat sense you were only going I one like, way i actually would hate to see what i, I would hate to know what i look like Aye, if both me and you both mate if we had just kept drinking and kept no giving a fuck about I what we were eating we'd be absolutely massive and we would, we would not be obviously healthy we would not be fit we've both done a triathlon you've done the mm -hmm. triathlon yourself as well we throughout, both your, like cycling now throughout your transmission you know? we've been out cycles that last for three, four, five, six hours, I think we went for one day. Mm -hmm. We would never have to, we just went to the pub back in the day, but <laughs> the main thing is that you changed all that lifestyle mm -hmm. to live a life that you're now fit, healthy, and carrying that on. And we didn't do it too extreme so that you got there and thought, oh, okay, yes, I'm, I'm there, I'm done, yeah. you're, you're carrying it on. And I think that that's, uh, that's one of the other inspiring things, the fact that you are still going, you're in here training the day, mm -hmm. you're getting bigger, you've got other goals, so what's your goals now? Well, I'm kind of, I'm looking to bulk up a bit, you know. Um, really? Yep. Really fit in. Aye. 
fine. But you know, but it was something that actually, you know, I, I can I'm I kinda looking at your questions here, so I'm gonna just take this one and steal it you know. So you're asking me what I'm doing, you know, what's my journey now? So obviously after the photo shoot, after and bearing in mind I'm still injured here, quite heavily injured back in April, uh, with a shoulder. Oh, you, know, you couldn't train for a month? I, I couldn't train, but I could train. Upper body. I could. So, that, so, so what I've decided to do is, you know, I had a, a, a bit of a bad space after the photo shoot because you, you're that regimented, you're that, you know, uh, you know, really focused on that shoot, that day, that diet, that food, the training. Yep. The, when the photo shoot comes, it's like, right, what am I going to do now? Do you know what I mean? I've like just had the best day of my life. <laughs> What, what do I do? I gotta go back to the gym tomorrow. Do I come see Scott? But with my injury, that's what made I it a bit different, man. Didn't it? My injury, I chose to take a couple of months off. I went holiday with my girlfriend. I think I, I don't yeah, think that's yeah. entirely true, because you were training your legs. I was tr training my legs. You were doing a bit. You, you were doing a bit of cardio. You didn't yeah. take two months off. You yeah. took a, a few oh, weeks no, off. No, no, no. I mean, you know, I kind of. For the hell rigidness in the food. Aye, aye, know, totally. That's aye, that's just, totally I fine. Just, I just took the foot off the gas a wee bit, changed it into a slower gear. Mate, if M D deserved to do that, it aye. was yourself. And um, but what I found was this injury kept, you know, holding me back, and I didn't actually think that myself and the physio actually knew the extent of the injury till a couple of sessions in, where we, we, we realised that the rotator cuff had, was more or less nearly snapped it was hanging on by a couple of threads um but what i found in that moment was that do you know what i'm going to get bigger because there's things i can train that don't need a rotator cuff totally. my legs right for a start my torso my arms in certain positions some parts of my shoulder i started working my chest again and i've started i'm thinking you know i can actually do this work around about this injury and keep it keep keep the shoulder protected and i thought you know i've just tried to make the best out of a bad situation and i've started enjoying training again you know it's been brilliant man because post shoot for people can be tough because they've not got that accountability there for mm -hmm. i need to be ready mm -hmm. for this day so the fact you had the injury you had a holiday the fact that Ah, you took your foot off the gas in that sense, which was totally fine, but you kept at it. You ah, went, yeah. you kept at the gym, you kept training, you worked round the injury. My diet was you didn't, if, you didn't throw the toys at the pram because you had an injury. You I worked around it. I threw it once, remember? You I threw it once, I phoned you and then you're like, ah, get back in that gym and but I'm where'd like, you I'm back in. Where'd you phone me for? <laughs> the gym. Exactly, so <laughs> you didn't even throw them out. You just threw them out uh, for a wee certain point. Yeah. But even at that, you were, I was like, ah, what are you talking about? You're still made. You've made progress. You're just right. no. You're just no benching a hundred kilos that you used to, and that's why you're in the half. Aye, that was the way half. I couldn't even lift a fucking five kilo fucking weight. But now you just you benched eighty today. Benched, benched uh, one rep ninety. Ninety, ninety. Uh, yeah. So you're back. To, you're almost back to full health there, buddy. But I found a love for big compound movements like deadlifts. You used to hate squatting. I love it. Absolutely you used to yeah. You used to ditch leg day. No, tell me. <laughs> but <laughs> now you're doing. You're doing weights that you've never done before, uh, and you idea. enjoy it, and you're you're mm -hmm. really you're really your legs have came. You can see the difference in the mm -hmm. legs even in the mm -hmm. amount of time you've done it. So um, that was um, that was a really good way of coping with an injury that could uh -huh. have potentially because people get injured and they just stop training because it's an injury. Oh, I can't train, mm -hmm. and then the next minute I've no at the gym for the next year. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so you done well there, bud. Um, mm -hmm. Really did, and. Um, Looking forward to the next wee while where we see where your where your lifts go when you're fully heal totally. healed, mm -hmm. um, because you found something that you love and that right. you'll probably be doing forever now. I know, I love it, and obviously, you know, I couldn't have done it without Scott. You know, so I know what I would say is obviously, you know, Scott's knowing this. Uh, well, my impression is that Scott's knowing a podcast to try and sell you anything. He's just a genuine guy, and I just think that. If you are like, looking to change and just do something different with your life, get, just get in contact with him because obviously if it can help me, then I'm almost positive it can help MD. You know, I've, so I've seen it, I've seen the proof. So thanks, man. He's my, bro, he's my bro. He's my bro. thanks for doing the podcast, mate. Aye, because uh, like as you said, this isn't to punt into anybody. No, it's not, not to 
make money because it's a free thing that you right. I don't get paid for and it takes up quite a lot quite a lot of time. But purely for that conversation that we just had, somebody's gonna get something from that. Well, somebody's gonna get how you went through that and the passion that you had for it and the belief that you got mm -hmm. from it and the results that you got from it and go man i'm going to give that a bash or yeah, somebody that's already it. training with me or training with another coach is going to give that's going to give them a wee kick on me it's going to be a wee kick on because you're a real person who had totally. real struggles and still does but still continues to work towards her goals mm -hmm. and i'm fucking proud of you mate right, good thanks again all right Appreciate it, man. Um, thanks for uh, listening or watching whatever you've done. Uh, it's Friday night. We're away to get pushed. No, I'm away to get pushed. Jokes. I'm getting pushed on a spot team. Is that you? Thanks for having us on the night, bud. No, don't get off me. That was good. I'll get you Sorry. on. I think so, man. In, right, anything yeah. else you want to say or no, any, any jokes? Um, you know, have a lovely weekend, guys. And, uh, lovely to <laughs> That's to a lovely to thing to, to say. It's lovely to speak to you, you know, it's quite exciting, I feel. Aye, so it's, uh, it's been good. How long, yeah. we, how long have we been going for here? Been going yeah. for a long time, and I'm one hour, for the toilets. One hour, 14 minutes. Aye. So, I've enjoyed that, buddy. Just a shame you forgot to click record the video at the start, wasn't it? Aye, so let's um, think about accountability here. It's your podcast. Aye, never so. mind, mate. All right, right. see you later on, Cheers. guys. Bye.